Are you into biohacking, trying to improve your brain and body performance? Then let me share with you a couple of crucial mistakes that many people make. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Greg and I'm a brain hacker creating content that will help you upgrade your brain performance. If this interests you, then subscribe below and join our amazing community. Today, I'm going to share with you a couple of biohacks, very popular ones that many people do all wrong and no one seems to tell them about. Now, if you do something really wrong like most people do, then in the best case, nothing will happen so your performance will not improve. But in the worst case, your performance can really suffer, can decline, and you can even suffer from the unwanted side effects. So let's just start. Now, the first biohack that many people do really wrongly is that when they wake up, they immediately meditate, either take a shower or even do some kind of breathing exercises. Now, first of all, there is nothing wrong with those activities. Even I very often meditate almost every single day. And I also do breathing exercises like the Wim Hof breathing, and I do it almost daily. Now, I'm not such a big fan of cold showers, but let's talk about this a bit later. Now, the big problem with doing those activities first thing in the morning is that the first thing in the morning, you actually have to go outside and get some sun exposure. Even if it's cloudy outside, if it's dark, if it's snowing or whatever, doesn't matter, you need to go outside and get some light exposure in this case. Because the sun exposure or the light exposure will activate certain cells in your eyes called the melanopsin ganglion cells, and this will set your circadian rhythm. And so your circadian rhythm is really, really important because this is what boosts your energy in the morning and keeps you activated and motivated and energized during the day. And the same rhythm, so the same circadian rhythm, also allows you to fall asleep in the evening and ensures a really good sleep. Also, the light exposure in the morning will increase your cortisol levels. And as you probably know, cortisol is known as the stress hormone, but it is actually an energy hormone because you need some cortisol to be energized, to be focused, to be alert and so on. Of course, lots of cortisol can cause issues, but it is important to have a little bit in your system during the day to be energized. Now, cortisol naturally increases in the morning and then decreases in the evening. But if you go outside in the morning, once you wake up as soon as possible, then of course this increase will be more rapid and this will give you the needed energy that you need for the day. And after five, 10 minutes of sun exposure, then you can go meditate, then you can do the breathing exercises, take a cold shower and so on. The second biohack that people do all wrong is that they use blue light blockers all over the day. Now, first of all, there's nothing wrong with the blue light blockers or the blue light glasses. Uh, personally, I don't use them because I have the eyeglasses, but I actually changed the lenses a couple of months ago in my other eyeglasses, and I actually used those uh, new lenses that actually block the blue light uh, for a while, but it didn't really work for me. Because if you wanna get the benefits out of the blue light blockers, you need to wear them in the evening and not in the morning or during the day because there are two big problems with the blue light blockers. First of all, as I already told you, you need as much light exposure in the morning. This is super, super important because if you get the light exposure, then your circadian rhythm will know it's the morning, um, you will be more energized, you will be more focused and so on. Now using the blue light blockers actually blocks the blue light, which is very, very beneficial in the first part of the day. So it makes no sense to me why would anyone wear blue light blockers in the morning or during the day. And the second big problem with the blue light blockers is that I often see people wearing them in the evening or in the late afternoon, which is fine, which is good, but they wear them in a room which is totally lit up. The lights are really bright and they wear those blue light blockers and they think, you know what, they're gonna really help me fall asleep and sleep better and then feel more energized the day after. But the big problem is not the blue light, it is the overall brightness of the light in the room in which you are in. So if it's really dark where you are in the evening, and if you're watching TV or using your smartphone and so on, then of course use the blue light blockers, they will be helpful. But if it's really uh, bright, I mean the brightness of the light is the big problem, not the blue light. So first decrease the brightness and then use the blue light blockers if you wanna get those additional benefits and not the other way around. The third biohack that I want to mention is that people sometimes use the red light therapy devices in the evening and this is really bad. Now red light therapy is one of the newest trends in the biohacking industry and many people really love using those red light therapy devices. And there's nothing wrong with them, especially because some studies show a lot of potential benefits of those devices. However, most studies that I've seen are pretty average or even low quality. 
but there are some exceptions. And one of the studies actually showed that using such a device, such a red light therapy device, can actually improve your mitochondrial function and offset aging, which is one of the main reasons why people use such lights. But there are a couple of things you need to know. First of all, studies show that if you're younger than 40 years old, those uh, devices for improving uh, mitochondrial function will have no benefit whatsoever. If you're over 40, then yes, they can be beneficial. Secondly, and that's really important to know, you have to do the therapy in the morning before noon. If you do it in the afternoon, you'll get no benefits in terms of improving your mitochondrial function. And I don't see many people telling you that. Now, this probably has something to do with the circadian rhythm. I'm sure about it, but we just don't understand the mechanisms yet. And thirdly, really important to know is that if you go outside in the morning, as I already suggested, and get this uh, sun exposure or some light exposure in the morning for about five to 10 minutes, you'll get exactly the same benefits on the mitochondrial function as if you would use such a uh, device or such a light. Now, I'm not telling you not to use uh, such lights, but if you do them, then use them correctly. You need to be older than 40 years old. And most importantly, use them in the morning. And you need to have the right expectations as well. By the way, guys, if you like this video, please press the like button below. Now, another popular body hack is to take cold showers or ice baths. I'm not a big fan of ice baths or cold showers, but I know most of the benefits out there. And I know those cold showers can be really, really beneficial for some people. Now, if you're really stressed, if you are a stressed individual or if you're a high achiever working in a very stressful environment, then actually using those uh, bio hacks like cold showers or ice baths is actually really, really bad for you. And here's why. So most people use those therapies for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, cold showers can instantly increase your energy levels, then they can improve your immune system, and it's a really good mind training um, to learn how to decrease stress levels or decrease stress in your body uh, when you don't want to be too stressed. Because what happens during those cold showers is that um, cortisol increases in your body, but also adrenaline increases in your body, but not in the brain. So adrenaline in the brain is called epinephrine, the same molecule, works that's pretty much the same, but it is released within your brain. Now, because it's not, it's not released during cold showers, your mind should stay pretty calm, and that's why you can train your mind, and then with your mind you can train your body to stay calm, to decrease stress, when you expose your body to such stressors such as cold shower. But if you're a stressed individual or if you are anxious, for example, then such additional stress that you put on your body is really not gonna do you anything good. It's actually gonna cause additional stress and more stress will lead to more stress and then this can lead to burnout. So in such a case, I do not recommend using cold showers or ice baths. And the same is true for high intensity interval trainings or so-called HIIT trainings. For most people, for normal people who are not stressed, they're really beneficial if you do two to four times per week, that's really good for you. But if you are under stress, under severe stress, or if you're anxious, then do not do such trainings because they will do more damage than good. By the way, guys, do you wanna know how well does your brain perform? go through our free brain assessment, link in the description below, and get your brain performance score. Another popular biohack is to drink bulletproof coffee. Now, as you probably know, bulletproof coffee um, is basically a really strong coffee combined with MCT oil and some butter. And you can watch my review of bulletproof coffee in this video up here. Now, personally, I used to like bulletproof coffee a lot. I drank it quite often in the morning, especially on an empty stomach because it's really high in calories, so I didn't want to uh, combined with my breakfast. But after months of drinking, I started noticing certain weird side effects, especially when I was drinking it daily for a couple of weeks. And here are the biggest problems of drinking bulletproof coffee in the morning on an empty stomach. First of all is that coffee is really not an energy booster, but it is an alertness booster. And actually it doesn't really increase your energy levels, but it offsets the time when you get tired. It actually helps you stay alert for a bit longer but then most people experience a mild crash. Now, why this happens? Well, because coffee binds to adenosine receptors and adenosine is a molecule that increases in your body the longer you're awake, the more adenosine there is. And what coffee actually does is it actually uh, offsets the activity of adenosine for a while. But adenosine still builds up in the system. And then all of a sudden, when the caffeine effect winds up, all this additional adenosine that build up in your system will actually be the result of the crash that happens. And the second thing is, if you drink coffee too early in the morning, within two hours after waking up, 
This will actually cause a mid-morning crash, not just because of the adenosine levels, but also because you will use the coffee to wake up from the sleep that you had a couple of hours before and not really to enhance your alertness after you were already awakened. And because of a special mechanism that is working in this case, you will actually experience this mild crash. And that's why drinking bulletproof coffee on an empty stomach in the morning is really not beneficial for you, especially if you wanna have optimal brain power. So overall, I have nothing against drinking coffee. Even bulletproof coffee can be beneficial in certain cases, but do not drink it so early in the morning because it will have more negative effects than positive effects. And lastly, people take all kinds of wrong nootropic supplements to boost their brain power and cognition and to biohack their brain and body. And because of that, they suffer from all kinds of side effects and don't get the desired effects and results. Now, if you want to learn about the best nootropics that are actually effective and can help you out, watch the video up here and learn all about them. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. And guys, I hope to see you soon again. Stay well.